Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm going to show you how to install a Recluse Radius CX clutch on your dirt bike. This CX kit from Recluse combines the best of everything Recluse has to offer. It's got the EXP disc, that's what makes it an auto clutch. It also has the torque drive friction discs, and those are what the pros are using. It has all new billet components for added durability and performance. Now, if you need to know more about these components, then Chase has a spotlight video on them, so check that out. But today, we're just gonna show you how to get these installed. To do this job, we have some common hand tools, rags, safety glasses, and rubber gloves. We we'll also need an oil pan. We're using a Tusk oil change kit. It comes with the crush washer and your choice of oil. And if you have a four stroke, it's actually gonna come with that oil filter as well. We have the Recluse Radius CX clutch we're gonna install. We've got all these parts out and there's a couple parts still in the box, but this kind of gives you an idea of what it comes with. The clutch cover gasket that comes with the Recluse, it will work, but it's just a straight piece of rubber and you're gonna have to overlap the ends. We didn't wanna take any chances and have any leaks. So we actually went with a Tusk gasket for the clutch cover and we're also using some contact cleaner. Before we begin the install process, you'll wanna look through the manual that came with the clutch. You'll also need the Recluse instruction manual and your model specific service manual for more information, proper procedures, and specs. All right, before we pull anything off the bike, we need to get these friction discs soaking in oil. So that also includes that EXP friction disc. We're just using an oil pan and if you want, you can use a Ziploc bag. This is just easier for us to do right now. Now while these soak, we'll go ahead and we'll start pulling parts off our bike. The clutch setup we're installing today is designed for a bike that came with a cable clutch originally. We actually went ahead and put a hydraulic Magura clutch on there. So if you still have the cable clutch, it's a good time right now to check that cable and make sure it's still in good condition. And if you need to replace it, do so now. After that, we will turn the gas off and then we'll go ahead and shift the bike into fifth gear. And if you do plan on changing your oil right now, go ahead and drain it out and then you'll refill it once you have your clutch all put back together. If you are draining your oil, you can do this process with the bike on the stand. But if you just put fresh transmission oil in there, then in that case, you can lean the bike over like we're gonna do. So to gain access to this clutch cover, we need to get this brake pedal out of the way. And the easiest way to do that is to press our rear caliper in just a little bit. And then I'll take a screwdriver, press the brake pedal down. And then this is just gonna keep it out of the way while we do everything else. And I'll loosen all these clutch cover bolts and when you take these out, make sure you know which bolt goes where because some of them are different lengths. Now we can loosen up these six bolts holding down our clutch springs and we're gonna go in crisscross patterns and just small steps at a time until they're all loosened up. So with those bolts and springs removed, we can now remove the pressure plate. And when you take this off, this throw out assembly has a thrust washer and a thrust bearing on it, and they're held on with a circlip. Uh, sometimes they don't have that circlip and the washer will stick to the pressure plate. So if that's the case, make sure you look for it and keep track of it. So we've got this lock washer right here on this hub nut, and we need to bend this flat tab down so we can remove the nut. So to do that, I'm just gonna take this chisel and we'll hammer it flat. We'll take this drift, finish flattening it out. And the reason why we put this thing in fifth gear is so when we put our breaker bar and our wrench on here, we can loosen it up. So we'll go ahead and do that. The other thing that's gonna be helping us is this brake pedal, if we pull down on it, and actuate that brake, it'll help keep the wheel from moving.
So we'll go ahead and remove this nut and lock washer. So on this specific bike, we actually had a washer behind the lock washer. Our manual from your clue says not to reuse this, so we'll just set this aside. Now that we have the nut and washers off, we're just gonna, gonna grab a hold of this clutch hub and we'll pull it straight out. So we actually have a thrust washer and this was on the back side, it stuck to it. So make sure you take that off and put it back into place. So with this clutch pack out, some bikes, they'll have a judder spring down in there and some won't. Ours doesn't have that judder spring, but if it does, our manual says to reuse it. So on ours, it does give us the option to use a judder spring if we want to, and it even gave us a part number to use, but on ours, we're actually not gonna use it. They suggest it more on the 450s. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe our gasket sealing surface off with a rag. So the clutch basket, we are going to reuse this. And if you're gonna reuse your clutch basket, you need to check the fingers for any grooving. And then also on this, it has some dampers on the back and you need to make sure that there's no free play in those dampers. If there are, then you'll go ahead and repair this or replace it at this time. So what we'll do next, we'll take this new hub and we'll set this down into place. Make sure we're aligned on the splines. And then our clutch kit came with a new locking washer. So we'll put that into place and make sure these tabs go down into the hub. And then I'm actually gonna put a little bit of oil onto this nut for when it goes on. And we're gonna torque this to 50 foot pounds. Your bike might be a little bit different. Ours specifically calls for 50 foot pounds. So always check the manual both the recluse manual and your OEM service manual to be sure. Now that we've torqued this nut, what we'll do, we'll use some channel locks and we're gonna bend both of these tabs up into place. And that way this nut isn't gonna go anywhere. Okay, so the next thing we need to put on are the sleeves for the clutch fingers and these tabs sticking out right here, they need to go towards the center of the clutch. And then when we install these, slide them down into place and make sure they bottom out on the clutch basket. And in our manual, it says it's normal. Sometimes these tabs will stick past the clutch basket just a little bit and sometimes it'll just sit under that edge right there. So if it sticks out a little bit or just under, that's normal, it's fine. Just as long as it's seated all the way down in the groove. To install these clutch plates, we do have a few different styles here. This one on the edge is kind of wavy. We're gonna set this one aside and also one steel and those are gonna go on later. Then these friction discs also has one that's different. So this thinner disc actually has a larger inside diameter. So we're gonna set that one aside for now. So the first clutch plate we'll install is gonna be a steel clutch plate. So we'll slide that down into place. And then if these fingers get in the way, you can just kind of push them back where they need to go. Next, we'll install the EXP disc. And something I wanna point out is this thing is actually tunable and it does, the kit does come with a few different springs you can use, but what we're gonna do, we're just gonna run the stock setup for now. And then if we feel like changing it later on, then we can do that. After that, we'll put another steel plate into place and then we'll alternate frictions with steels until we run out with the standard ones that we have. Another thing I wanna point out, some of these plates, or all of these plates have this red dot across them. So the paint, it doesn't really mean anything, it's just for manufacturing, and you don't need to worry about lining those up. So we just ended the regular pack with a friction disc. Now what we'll do, we'll take this wavy steel plate and we'll put this on top and then we'll take the large inside diameter friction plate 
We'll put this into place. And if you are going to run a judder spring, this is where it goes and you only run the judder spring itself. You don't run, some of them have a flat washer behind them. You're only gonna run the judder spring. And since we're not, we're gonna go ahead and install this last steel plate right on top. So with this steel plate installed, we need to install the pressure plate without putting the throw out assembly in because we need to make some adjustments to this clutch. So we'll go ahead, set the pressure plate into place. We've already got our new spring. It's got a collar and new bolt for us. So we're gonna go ahead and snug these down. We're not gonna torque them right now. And then we'll show you how to adjust this up. Installing these springs is the same as we took them off. We're gonna work in a crisscross pattern and we're only gonna go in a few small steps at a time. And that way we don't warp anything. Now we're ready to set the installed gap adjustment. Why this adjustment is important is it allows the auto clutch to function. And if you need more information about this, look it up in the manual that came with this kit. And that manual is also gonna show you how to do the adjustment because each bike is gonna be a little bit different. So just because I'm adjusting this one way doesn't mean it's gonna be the same adjustment for your bike. So to make this adjustment, what we'll do, we have this lock pin right here and you'll need to press down on it and then you'll turn it a quarter of a turn. This should turn really easy and it's under spring tension and this can come all the way out. So just come up slow with it, be careful and don't force anything because you could damage it. Now to make the adjustment, we'll turn the adjuster ring counterclockwise until it gets tight against the pressure plate. And when we turn it, we're just using a screwdriver. You can also use your finger whatever's easier for you. So you can see this adjuster ring, it just comes to a stop right there. That's where you wanna stop. You don't wanna force it past there. As soon as it tightens up with just a little bit of pressure. So what we'll do now, we'll remove this pressure plate and then we're gonna make another adjustment. As I was pulling the pressure plate off, you'll notice this steel stuck to it. And I'm just gonna set that back into place just so I don't forget about it. Our kit came with a marker. I'm gonna clean this hub up and the adjuster ring. And we'll take this marker and where I have this round spot on it right here, right in the center, I'm gonna mark that in relation to the hub. And then I'll turn this counterclockwise one full turn until our mark lines back up. And then we'll move this adjuster ring two circle detents to the right. So now that we've made our adjustment, we have this lock pin. It's gonna be perpendicular to the adjuster ring, that slot. And so now, we can push this down into place and then we'll turn it a quarter of a turn and let it lock back into position. With the lock pin into position, there is a check to make sure it's locked down. And what that is, there's a groove in the bottom and you wanna make sure that's flush with the inner hub. Now we can install the throwout assembly. I just put a little bit of oil on this before I put it in place. And then we'll reinstall the pressure plate and torque those bolts down to nine foot-pounds. Now we'll take our new clutch cover and we'll put the tusk gasket into place.
When we were putting this clutch cover on, we noticed this mounting boss right here is actually a little bit thinner than the stock one. And these bolts were bottoming out when we went to tighten them before they were even touching the cover. So what we did, we added some washers on the two big bolts on this model and it took care of our problem. On this bike, I'm gonna loosen this oil drain bolt right now and then I'll stand this upright and check that oil level. Obviously, this crush washer right here on ours, this looks pretty bad. So we're gonna, we have a Tusk crush washer kit. We're just gonna put a new one right on there. So I removed the check bolt and we wanna make sure oil is up to this level. So since we have this bigger cover now, I am gonna add just a little bit till it's at this level right here. We'll just make sure we have a little bit of oil coming out of that check hole right there. This new crush washer is looking a lot better. Now we need to restore our rear brake pedal. So I'm gonna remove the screwdriver and then we'll pump this up. So we're good to go on that. Now that we have the clutch cover installed, we need to warm the bike up and then we'll check our free play gain. Now there's two methods to do this. So our kit, it came with this rubber band and you'll wanna use this to learn how to do it initially. But after that, you wanna check it just with your fingers. And basically what you'll do, take the free play out of the lever, you'll rev the bike half to three quarter throttle, just one blip and notice how much the lever moves. So for the rubber band, we're gonna just wrap this around the handlebar, loop it through itself, and then put this around the lever itself. And then we've already warmed up our bike. Anytime you're starting the engine, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. So we're gonna start this and rev the engine. The Recluse manual recommends about an eighth inch of free play gain on our bike. So we have quite a bit more than that. So to adjust that out, if you've got too much gain, you'll turn the adjuster ring counterclockwise, one circle detent, and you just go one detent at a time. If you have too little free play gain, you go clockwise one circle detent at a time. So we'll go ahead and adjust that up. If you have more questions about that, refer to the manual that came with your kit. This strap came with our clutch kit, and what it allows us to do is pull this clutch in and hold it down while we change the installed height so we can adjust our free play gain. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on. Now that we have the clutch cover off, We'll turn the adjuster ring one notch counterclockwise, and then we'll put the locking detent back into place and reinstall our cover. After that, we'll check our free play gain, and you'll repeat this process until the free play gain is within the correct specification. Okay, now we've made our adjustment. We'll take the strap off, get that out of the way. And we'll reinstall this rubber band. Start the bike up and we'll recheck our free play gain. All right, now that you have your free play gain set, you're ready to go ride this thing. But I can't stress this part enough, you need to follow the break-in procedure that's outlined in the manual that came with this kit. Now, if you need this kit, it's available on our website along with just about anything you could want for your bike, so be sure to check that out. We offer free shipping on orders over $75. And for more helpful content, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.